today with uh, ben, uh, Pierre Ben Susan, uh, who, who plays the guitar. And yeah, actually, um, yeah, there's his new album, his 10th album, which is called Vividly. And maybe you can just, yeah, tell something about the album. Sure. Uh, well, the title first, Vividly, it's an uh, English word. And um, for me, it, uh, it comes from a friend from California. His name was Pat Milliken, and Pat was, um, he had a very flurry vocabulary of a few words which were uh, very uh, like uh, interjection, like uh, vivid leave was like a jubilating experience, something extremely uh, joyful and something with a lot of energy in the moment. And so I wanted to, um, to pay him a tribute and, and write, to write a piece for him. Mm -hmm. And he passed away and that piece became the album. The entire album was called after his uh, inspiration mm -hmm. of, of that way to look at life okay. vividly. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted my record to be called Vividly, like something very furtive, very, like, a, like a coma. Okay. Mm. okay, I see, that's interesting. And yeah, the, the music on that CD, what is it about? The music is um, a, a music that that sometimes goes back uh, 20, 25 years, and some pieces were incubating for that time. Some others were more more recent, but uh, all all of them went through the process of uh, um, finding their way out to the guitar, to the voice. Like some records, I I wanted to only play guitar. That's why I am I'm known as a guitar player. And um, but I've been always singing, and I do sing at every show, every concert. I do both. Mm -hmm. And um, on that record, vividly, I wanted both to be as important. So there are as many instrumental pieces that there are songs. Mm -hmm. And one is in English. Mm -hmm. Everything else is in French. Okay. There are seven songs, seven instrumentals. Okay. So it's very uh, democratic. But mainly you, well, if there are songs, they are in, in French, right? Or yeah, they're in also French. Also on other albums, I mean? On the other albums, they're mostly in French. And on my first record, I sang also in English. Okay. Because at that time, I was doing a lot of folk music from America, from England, from Ireland, from Scotland. Um, I was singing some blues. I was singing a lot of traditional stuff. And so... Yeah, I played bluegrass music. That's how I started to play professionally with Bill Keith, the banjo player. Mm -hmm. And so my first record, I sang also a little bit in English with an horrible accent. Mm -hmm. And now I still have an horrible accent. <laughs> well, a French one, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you when I hear myself, sometimes I say, oh, my God, what a horrible accent. But, oh, okay. but, you know, English is such a convenient language mm -hmm. that you don't have to... You know, I, it's very, very practical. You know, everybody in the world speaks English not very well, but people understand each other. Which, if you are going to use words, it's yeah. very convenient. But and especially, uh, you are very well known in the English-speaking world, right? I mean, you I'm, I'm more, a lot to, yeah. to the United States, and I think you are even better known in the States than in Europe. Right? Mm, probably, yeah, okay. because I've been playing there a lot, mm. so um, I've been. Touring, traveling, playing concerts over and over and over. I had a, a good structure there, a record label, a good agent, mm -hmm. a good assistant, good PR people. So at the end of the day, it makes a difference, I think. Okay. Um, it was more sporadic in France, not as regular. Oh, okay. And um, so I, I think um, I want to go where people want to hear me. Mm -hmm. It's not like they don't want to hear me mm -hmm. here, but it's more difficult. So whenever it's possible for me to play anywhere, I go and play anywhere. It could be Luxembourg, it could be in France, it could be in America. If tomorrow they want to hear me in Algeria, I go back to my home country. Yeah. If they want to hear me in Turkey, I go to Turkey. Mm -hmm. I went to Israel, I went to Morocco, I went mm -hmm. to Korea, I went to Japan, mm -hmm. Australia, and Canada, all over, in, all over Europe. It's it's amazing because I'm thinking sometimes if I had not been a musician, mm. maybe I would have not traveled that much. Mm. I don't think I'm a real traveling man. I mm. think I'm a, I'm a traveling man, but I'm not a real traveler. That's mm. what I mean. 
music forced me to travel. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it was hard for me just to go away from my home where after a while I'm, I'm settled and mm -hmm. I have my, my, uh, my um, mode of doing things, uh, re rehearsing, of eating, of being with my family. And sometimes going on the road is like, oh no. It takes me, I'm sick like even a few days before, I, mm. I'm, I'm very nervous, I don't sleep well and, mm. and then I start traveling and I, it's like I'm, I'm muting mm. into that other myself oh, okay. and I'm, I think I'm very good at that, mm. which, which is that I'm a good traveler, mm. which means that I adapt myself extremely well. Mm. I, I sleep in different bed every night. Mm. I meet. I love meeting people. Yeah. I love speaking a different language. I love. Okay. I'm curious on on other people, how they live, their culture, mm. and I think all this is in fact reflecting the music mm. I play. Mm. But is there a place you would call home? Here. Sometimes that's all I have. Okay. My heart is my home, mm. because what is home? I mean, of course, my home is is my stone house where, mm. where I live with my wife and my son. So mm. that's home, but mm. it could be anywhere, mm. really. Mm. It could be anywhere. So sometimes with friends, visiting friends here and there, they say, consider our home like your home away from home. Oh, okay. And of course, it's not the same, but mm. for a while, it's, mm. it's reconforting. Mm. It's, uh, I see what they mean, and I really appreciate their, their um, hospitality. Mm. But I felt that when I play music, this is my home. In fact, the music is my home. Okay. The music sort of mm. helped me to find a home, to be mm. grounded. Mm. So to be grounded, meaning mm. like a plant, yeah. the earth where you are feeds you and nourishes you. Um, I look sometimes at my home, like I see my house, and I live in a little village one hour away from Paris. And, okay. um, And I think, wow, that's my home? Yeah, it's strange. You know, it's, it's just a... Uh, I mean, it's all so furtive. We are just passing by anyway. Mm. This life is like this. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to go away and come back and appreciate mm. things both ways. Mm. Like I was in Arizona. Mm. On just uh, at the end of my last American tour, mm. I was in an Indian sacred place, mm. which was like a vortex. Okay. And because it was a vortex, Indians didn't want to live there. It was too strong. Oh, really? So when the white man arrived, he built houses exactly where the Indians decided to not live. The Indians used to live in the mountains, just around Charles, just beautiful red mountains, mm. like uh, two hours away from Phoenix. Mm. A mountain and go up, you go start going high. It's very the wildlife is abundant, quite amazing. And so I spent three days there, mm. played and went to to look a little bit around. And then three days later, I was uh, in New York, and and the next day I was in my house, okay. in my village, meeting mm. people in my village who didn't even know I was in America. Mm. Like, oh, where have you been? We haven't seen you for a while. I said, well, I was just, you know, traveling a little bit. It's also, you know furtive and, and, and totally surreal mm. that uh, it's difficult sometimes to say this is my home. Mm. What, is, what is my home? My home is uh, where I am, mm. you know. Yeah. A little earlier you talked, uh, well you mentioned the place where you were born. Um, can you tell me a bit more about your Algerian origins? Yeah, well I was born in Oran, which is the second largest city after Algiers on the coast, uh, close to the Moroccan border, just across Andalusia. And um, I was born from Jewish uh, family, Jewish descent, uh, Jewish, Alsatian, English, mm. French, um, Iranian, mm. Moroccan. So I'm already, you know, we're all already so mixed and so so fruit, like a fruit salad already, like it was, right. you know. Yeah. And then we, after the War of Independence, I was four years old. I do remember the war. Mm. Um, we moved to France mm. after the, the Accord of Evian, which was a peace treaty that the yes. Gaulle signed with uh, the FLN. 
And so one million uh, French people and Jews decided to, to not stay in Algeria. Some stayed, but mostly people were afraid to stay, and a lot of people didn't want to stay in a country, in a Muslim country. They wanted France to be there, otherwise it would go, so they had, so they left mm. in with a lot of sorrow and mm. a lot of uh, bitter feelings, mm. a lot of bitterness. Mm. So my folks left that way with a lot of um, uh, fear and anxiety. Mm. They lost everything they had just about and re rebuilt their life in the suburb of Paris. Yes. This is where I grew up. So I was four and at the age of seven I started to play piano. And so for me, uh, life was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I from almost as um, as as young as I can remember, music has always been mm. part of my life. Mm. So. Music was already there in Algeria. Yes. There was music there in the air, like mm. like it was nothing. Mm. It was always mm. an accompaniment of life. Yeah. And so he, he started, he, he, it remained an accompaniment of my life when I was seven. And when I was uh, 11, I taught myself how to play guitar. Mm. And I was 12, uh, I, taught, I asked myself, what will you do when you will be grown up? And in the next minute, I answered to that question, and I, I told myself, we are going to be a full-time musician. Okay. So when, since the age of 12, I, I knew that I will want to, to play music. So when I was 16, I left school. Mm -hmm. And I had this project for four years. Okay. So I school the day of my birthday yeah. and, and became a musician. Right. Full time, started to travel, make a record one year later. Mm -hmm. That record sold 75,000 copies and okay. won awards and mm -hmm. helped me to tour in the north of Europe and, mm -hmm. to, and a few years later to go to America. Mm -hmm. So, but the first instrument was the piano? Yeah. And then you discovered the guitar? Yeah. Why did you choose the guitar for your musical career? Because um, my piano teacher left and I felt like she abandoned me, but in fact she left because uh, her husband had a job in the south of France, so she followed him. And I, I tried to find another teacher and um, I didn't succeed finding a teacher that I felt close to. Mm -hmm. And I realized that uh, I... I um, I became a bit like an orphan, mm. so I didn't want to play the piano anymore because the piano reminded me too much of her. Oh, okay. So for uh, six months I didn't play music anymore, mm. and my parents were sort of poor mm. and uh, sold the piano. Oh, okay. And my father, who loved Django Reinhardt, mm. the guitar, the gypsy guitar player, um, bought me a guitar and oh, said, right. "Well, just in case, mm. this is guitar." Mm. And I didn't know what to do with the guitar. And one day, um, I got a record by Narciso Yepes playing Jeux Interdits. Like the, the, the soundtrack yeah. of the movie. All right. And I love that piece. And I, I didn't know how to play guitar, how to tune a guitar, mm -hmm. but I found out how to tune it just by listening to the record. I learned that piece by ear. And then it was the beginning of something different, a new adventure with that mm. instrument. Mm. But in fact, music was sort of calling me again and say, hey, where, where have you been yeah. this time? Mm. You left me, mm. come back. I'm going to show you a different road now. Mm. And so the different road was Bob Dylan, who showed me the way. Okay. Yeah, at, uh, one day at school, in the music class, a guy with a hair like this came with a guitar and started to, to tell us about folk songs, folk music, John Byers, Bob Dylan, mm -hmm. tell us about um, political protests uh, in America, mm -hmm. blues and stuff like that. And I, I totally fell in love with that thing and I thought, my God, he's playing guitar and I have a guitar at home. Mm -hmm. So I started to, to try to play guitar and learn a few chords and then that was, that was it. Mm -hmm. I sang a lot. A lot of uh, Dylan, a lot of uh, John Baez, a lot of Georges Brassens, Maxime Le Forestier, Grimoire Wright, a lot of singer-songwriters from France, from America. Mm -hmm. And then I started to sing blues and ragtime. Mm -hmm. Then one day I heard Irish music and that's what it. I said, oh my God, Irish music, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And you started to mix and mingle styles, right? Yeah, and then I started to look at the guitar like an instrument to play instrumental music. Mm -hmm. and and find a different way of tuning the guitar mm -hmm. and that mu that Celtic music was so amazingly fitting the guitar 
um, but I felt really at home with it, mm. and um, and that's it. I went on like this. So your guitar became a real partner for you, right? Yeah, and what I liked about the guitar was that you could take it anywhere. Mm. I could, ha I was, I always had the guitar with me. Right. I could not not play. Mm. Every time I was coming somewhere, I had to play, and people was oh. I mean, sometimes people are saying, "Well, they're very nice," but after a while, you say, "It was." I had to play, so I would go somewhere and isolate myself and play. I had to play, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it was amazing. And now you're giving, yeah, you give a lot of concerts. So, um, well, your guitar and you, what do you want to express then? With the guitar? Yes, you and your and, the, and your guitar. I want to say this is a beautiful world in which we live very challenging, rough, violent, but extremely beautiful. I think uh, I want to show that, that beauty in my own way. Mm -hmm. I want to I show how that maybe it's utopic, but maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to make people feel good in this world. Mm -hmm. That's what I would like to try to to communicate mm -hmm. with this music. You know, and with the songs and with everything. I think after a while all those notes are just a pretext. All the chords we create, all the melodies we create, all the ways uh, notes go into each other, all this association of sounds and colors. Yeah. It's, um, it's one, one road possible. But it's like one invitation. Mm. There are many invitations, but it's one of them. But basically, it's a way to make people feel better about their life. Mm. Right? I think music helps. It's, music is a healer. Sometimes I feel like I'm a doctor. And, so, and uh, I feel a lot of responsibility. And also, I try to, to take up the challenge. Mm. Because that makes me become a better person too. So it makes me work on myself. So it's it's an amazing uh, um, evolving process, you know. Yeah, very nice, very beautiful words. Thank you very much for Thank the you. interview.